Brand new CBS News polling reveals candidates' personal qualities matter more to Harris supporters than Trump supporters. 72% of Harris supporters say personal qualities are very important to their vote, while only 39% of Trump supporters say so. Let's talk about this some more. Bring in our political panel, Leslie Sanchez and Chuck Rocha. Chuck's a Democratic strategist, was senior advisor to Bernie Sanders' 2020 presidential campaign. And Leslie's a CBS News political analyst and Republican strategist. Well, that's a big difference, 72% and 39%. What do you make of the importance of that? Well, people know who Trump is. Um, mm. You know, they're not trying to select a Valentine. They need a leader of the free world. And I think people would fundamentally understand what they're buying in terms of negotiating that. Harris is still that unknown, that undecided factor. So likability and how they're perceived is going to make a, have a, a heavier weight, I think, for undecided voters than for Trump. They just uh, For Republicans, you had a lot of holding their nose and jumping in and supporting him in 2016. You saw consistent with that in 2020. I think Republicans are coming back around. They know he's leader of the party. They're going to support where they need to and fall in line, not in love as we like to say, but it, it, it can make a difference in these tight margins. Can the Harris campaign, can Democrats mechanize that somehow? Is there a way to fight that fight, or is he bulletproof? On this it? just in, personal qualities matter to Democrats, and they don't think Donald Trump has any. That's why you see people lining up that way. What we've seen with Donald Trump and motivation for Democrats is Donald Trump. People really love Donald Trump, and they really hate Donald Trump. What we're trying to look at now is what's the difference here to actually for a small group of undecided. As Leslie said, everybody knows Donald Trump. Everybody knows Democrats that are getting to know Kamala Harris, but it's baked in at almost 90 percent. There was more polling this weekend that said 90 percent of folks have kind of made up their mind. There's only a small group of people in just a handful of states like we were talking about off camera that will actually make up the decisioning matter with just one or two points. So who do we think those people are? Let me start with you. Who's who's still elastic right now? Women voters. Um, you have the Nikki Haley voters, right? They didn't necessarily come on board. They were really frustrated. They want you hear what these women talk about. I want somebody in the middle. Why can't I find somebody who's going to reach? across, kind of harken back to establishment, Republican, the, you know, the golden days, they'll talk about Ronald Reagan. They felt that Nikki Haley filled that gap. They don't see that. They don't hear that. You don't see Nikki Haley on the stump for Trump. Something like that could really help close in those competitive races, I think, even down ballot, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, they don't feel um, particularly their issues are being talked about. Uh, a lot of women are talking about economic, but why aren't they talking about it in the context of child care, mm -hmm. context of putting food on the table and grocery prices? So I think there's some area for movement on both sides, and it's advantageous for us to listen to those voters as opposed to assume it's an election like any other. Where do you mind for these people that are maybe persuadable? It comes down to folks that have come of age in the last four years. Folks who've been voting in every election have made up their mind. I'm working in over 20 congressional races and three Senate races, and we do focus groups and polling. Folks have made up their mind who are regular, what we call prime voters. But Scott, there's so many folks who've come of age. There's a million Latinos in Arizona and Nevada that have come of age. Just one example. The real question is, do they show up? Not just Latinos, but any young voter that's come of age. This is where the real unknown is. I take you back to 2016 and, and 2020, for that matter. There's a whole bunch of people who showed up for Donald Trump who no poster ever polled because they were new voters. As Democrats try to wrest the border security issue away from Republicans, they did so successfully in, in a special U.S. House race in February in New York. There seems to be a sense the vice president's going to try to do that with a border visit Friday. How would you counsel your candidates to try to take that issue back from Republicans? Let me tell you how I counsel them right now. There's a reason why Ruben Gallego is 15 points ahead of Trump or even Kerry Lake in Arizona, because he's a Marine, he's a father, and he's saying, we can be a nation of immigrants and a nation of laws all at the same time. And I think if you look at where they're spending their money, it's much more important than a border visit, but I think the border visit is very important. Tell me where your money's being spent to tell folks that you want a secure border and a fair immigration system. I think, I think the, the counter to that, why it's really tough, is you've had three and a half years to do that. Ruben Gallego is an outstanding candidate. I'll give you that. But he's also come from a military, law enforcement type background. Those types of candidates, whether they're Republican or Democrat, mm -hmm. tend to do really well on the border enforcement because they earn the voters' trust. They say, if we're going to close the border, I'm going to handle the issue. People give them faith that they're going to do that. You never saw that faith was given to Harris early on in the administration, and she never never really respected the voter to go and do, and do the task, and I think that's why it's tough. Let me bring it back to this issue of likability or personality being important. What does that say to you about a female candidacy? 
Uh, it's, there's there's got to be some dynamic that is unique here. I'm so glad you asked. I wrote a book about it called You've Come a Long Way, Maybe, uh, that talked about challenges particularly women candidate ha candidates have in this case. I think if you look at the case of Hillary Clinton and a contrast to that, somebody who was, again, very well known, had very high negatives. Harris being an anomaly because she doesn't have, there's so many that really don't want to know her. They're giving her the benefit of the doubt. I will argue that. And it's an advantageous um, overall. But likability matters. You can go back to Kennedy and Nixon and the first debate, you know, the charisma and style of a of a JFK uh, really cemented that win. Even Trump against Hillary Clinton, the high negatives against a polarizing figure, but people respected and felt he was relatable. Presidential campaigns are very different from your local congressional race. I've been running campaigns for 34 years, going back to Ann Richards. That's how old I am Ooh. in Texas. Presidential campaigns are about likability and trust. Donald Trump got hired in 26 because people were tired of what they were feeling. Joe Biden got elected because they trusted him not to be Donald Trump. It was a COVID year. This presidential election is about who you trust and who you like. 70, 80 percent of folks have already made up their mind. When it comes down to it, it's not a deep dive on policy around the presidentials. It's around who you trust and who you like. We have just a moment left. I want to get to one more thing. Ohio's Republican Senate candidate had some controversial remarks about abortion. Let me play that clip and ask you a question about it. There's a lot of suburban women, a lot of suburban women that are like, listen, abortion's it. If I can't have an abortion in this country, whatever I want, I will vote for anybody else. Okay, a little crazy, by the way, but especially for women that are like past 50. Bernie Moreno got some criticism that he uh, is playing into Democrats' hands by characterizing the abortion issue that way. What do you make of it? It's well-deserved. I mean, I don't think you're going to talk to women rationally and reasonably and think that. Women have uh, sisters, daughters, friends. Um, they're concerned about their own family. This is an issue that extends beyond one generation to multiple generations in their household. And I think that it deserves a respect on both sides of the aisle to talk about it intelligently. Look, there's something to be said about the scorn of an angry woman. And as an old Mexican from East Texas who's just been newly married for 38 days, I promise you, it took me that long to realize you don't mess with women or what women's rights are or anything that has to do with them. It's got nothing for a hairy-legged old man like me to have any part of. 38 days going good so far? So far, I can't believe it. So wonderful. Congratulations, Yay. by the way, Chuck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Leslie, Chuck, thank you both. <laughs> and thanks for your time.